Welcome to the WCF Developer Screencast Series. My name is Aaron Sconard and I work for Pluralsight, a training company that provides both instructor-led and online courses for Microsoft developers. Visit www.pluralsight.com for more details. In this short screencast, I'm going to show you how to create a simple WCF service using Visual Studio 2008. We'll start from scratch in this example, and along the way we'll define a data contract, a service contract, and then we'll actually implement the service. Then I'll show you how to host and test the service using the new WCF tools found in Visual Studio 2008. So here we are in Visual Studio 2008, and we're going to create a simple student evaluation service. Here at Pluralsight, we ask our students to fill out an evaluation after every course. So this service we're about to create could serve as the back end for that type of functionality. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the File menu and select New Project. I'll select WCF and the list of project types and WCF Service Library for the template. Then down here I'll type in Eval Service Library for the name. Then I'll press OK to let Visual Studio create for us this skeleton project. It gives me a sample WCF Service implementation right off the bat. But I want to start from scratch, so I'm going to delete these files. Then I can go ahead and add a new class to this project, and I'm going to call this class eval. This is going to represent an eval message that we use within this service. It's going to contain a few fields. It'll have an ID, it'll have a submitter name, it'll also have the actual comments from the submitter, and we'll have a date time called time submitted. Okay, now in order to make this an official WCF data contract, we have to annotate this with the data contract attribute. That's found in the system.runtime.serialization namespace, which I'll bring in. Then I need to decide which of these fields I, wa I want to include within this data contract. For this particular example, we're going to include all of them. Now we have a full-fledged WCF data contract that we can begin to use within our service contracts. Now I'm going to come over here to our solution, and I'm going to add another class to the project, and I'm going to call it IEvalService. It's actually going to be an interface, not a class. So we'll make this public interface, IEvalService. Then we're going to define a few operations. We'll have one called SubmitEval that takes an eval data contract as input. We'll then have another one called getEvals that returns a list of evals. Then we'll have another one called removeEval that takes an ID as input. Now in order to make this a WCF service contract, we need to annotate it with the service contract attribute, which is found in a different namespace, system.serviceModel. Okay, and then we need to decide which of these we wish to include within our service contract. For this example, we'll just include all of them. Okay, now we have a service contract that we can implement on our service. I'm going to come over here to my project again and add another class. This one will be called eval service, and it's going to be the actual implementation of our service. So here we're going to derive this guy from ieval service, and we'll let Visual Studio do the heavy lifting here and implement all those operations. Now I just need to decide how I'm going to implement each of these different methods. Well, to make things a little easier, I'm going to come up here to my eval service and annotate it with another attribute called service behavior. This attribute allows me to configure different things on my service around how it will be uh, managed by the WCF runtime behind the scenes. One of the things I can specify here is the instance context mode. Here I can specify that the instance context mode should be single, which means that the WCF runtime will only cr create a single instance of our service at runtime. It'll be a singleton. So now what I can do is I can manage my list of evals here just in memory. So I'll just go ahead and do that for the purposes of this demo. Then when submit eval is called, I'll go ahead and create a unique ID for this eval. We'll do that by saying gwid.newgwid dot to string and then we'll go ahead and say evals dot add and pass in our new eval object. When get evals is called we'll just return our list of evals and when remove eval is called here we're going to get a little fancier and we'll say evals dot remove 
and then we'll pass in evals.find, and then we'll use a predicate expression to find the actual eval of interest, where e.id equals the ID that was passed in. So here we have a full implementation of a WCF service that we're now ready to host and test. But before we can actually test this thing, we're going to have to define how we want to communicate with this service through what are called endpoints in WCF. You typically define the endpoints or the communication details in the application configuration file. And notice over here in our project, the WCF template actually gave us an app.config file. If I right click on this thing, I can actually edit that WCF configuration file right here. But before I do that, let me build our solution and make sure the project builds successfully. Then I'll come in and edit the WCF configuration. And notice it shows me that we have this service called Service1 and it's got some endpoints. Well, wait a second, we changed the name of our service. So we're going to have to modify this. Let me go ahead and go into here and find the assembly that contains our code. This is the service that we want to configure, so I'm going to select that and notice we're now configuring our eval service class. Okay, then for the endpoints, um, I want to go ahead and reconfigure the contract that we want to use on this particular endpoint. Here in this case, I want to use our ieval service contract instead of the one that it gave us to start. Okay, the other endpoint that it gives us is this metadata exchange endpoint. That's useful for retrieving the metadata from our service at runtime. Okay, so with that, with those few changes in place, we now have enough information configured on our service to host it up and to test it. Now, one of the neat new features in Visual Studio 2008 is that it gives us some built-in WCF tools for hosting and testing our services. It will look for an app.config file like this one we just configured within our WCF service library projects. And now when you simply press F5, it'll go ahead and launch the WCF service host application, which will host our service, and then it will launch a test client application that communicates with the WCF service host, and downloads the metadata from our service. Then it automatically builds us a UI based on the contract that it found on the endpoints. Okay, so notice if I minimize Visual Studio here and go to my task window, you'll see there's this WCF service host application up and running. If I double click on it, I can bring up this window and notice it shows our eval service is started and this is the address where the metadata can be retrieved. Well, when this WCF test client application started, it actually downloaded that metadata and built this UI based on the information it found within its endpoints. So here we have one endpoint exposed on that service, and it exposes the IEVAL service contract, and there are three operations that we defined before. Let's go ahead and test this. Let's submit an eval. So I'll come in here and type in a comment. I'll type in a submitter name down here as well, and then we'll just use the defaults and press invoke. This will send a message to our service using that eval data contract, and notice we get an empty response message back. Let's now change the submitter name to something else like Matt and invoke it again. Let's do it one more time. This time we'll type in John, invoke it one more time. Now let's go to get evals and invoke this. Notice we got three evals back. Okay, each one of them was submitted at a different time uh, and they were submitted by different submitters but they all share the same comments because I didn't bother to change those. Now let's see how we could actually remove one of these. Let's go ahead and right click on this, actually I'll just do a control C to copy this GUID into the clipboard. Then I'll come over here to remove eval and paste that in right here and I'm just going to remove the double quotes around that ID and then I'll press invoke on remove eval. And notice I got a, uh, an empty response message back. But now if I go back to get evals and invoke this again, notice the length is now two. We successfully removed that first eval from the collection. So there you have it, a simple example of how you can implement and test your first WCF service in Visual Studio 2008. Thank you for watching this video in the WCF Developer Screencast Series. 
You can find more in-depth online training videos at Pluralsight.com. Pluralsight offers an extensive library of online training courses covering a variety of current and emerging Microsoft technologies. And you can access this valuable content from anywhere, anytime, within just a few clicks, while still learning from industry experts you trust. Check it out today at Pluralsight.com.